Very, 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 very true. Mr. Vimukti, let's jump back to Professor. You are with us, Prof. I don't know. I am getting disconnected by the <laughs> host, so I don't know what is happening. So <laughs> no, I am here. I you are still with us, so Prof. We were you, when we just lost yeah. you. You were talking and about I, uh, the scientific data that was required for the conservation effort. That's when we lost right, you. Okay. So, uh, so you heard, if you would want, you heard that lot. Okay. Yes, we we heard that part up to where the scientific data came, where that was important for the conservation effort and and then keeping Singaraja safe for all of us to see at the moment. So just continue from there uh, with regards to how in data is conservation efforts. Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you for trying to connect. I must pardon for the viewers that something that is not uh, happening at the moment for the uh, viewers to give the best knowledge that, that we are trying to impart with to you. But you see, data was the one that changed the uh, outlook. The view of Singaraja became so big that the forest department uh, and the state or the government at that time really recognized that this should not be log because uh, it was declared in 1876 as a forest reserve and only because of the terrain that that piece of area uh, remained as a forest because all the forest that was declared as forest reserves in 1876 across the entire country it was done for the purpose of halting the massive deforestation that was taking place for various uh, cultivations like tea, rubber and the rest of it. And of course, uh, the timber production was prime. And you see, most of the Singharaja's low areas is mid-country. And therefore, you have some of the best trees for timber, like the Dipteroka, right. Shoria family, all of those. And then the other thing that uh, should be significantly recognized is that uh, the upper areas of Singharaja was recommended to be made a strict nature reserve way back in 1956. But okay. even then, the forest department was not uh, willing to part with it because of the timber value. Uh, so we can't, right. uh, in a way, uh, not recognize the fact that it was going to get logged. But uh, fortunately, by that time, Almost all the areas in the wet zone, low country, mid, uh, mid country areas were logged and finished. So this is why in right. the last remaining rainforest. So if I go to the next slide, I try to just show you some of the historic uh, events that were there. Uh, and I have the next slide. There yeah, you go. right. So you see, the significance of the data resulted in the National Science Council. Today, it is the National Science Foundation, uh, even building a research station inside, which was used by us in 1980 to get the information. The right. other thing that I think should be recognized is that the opportunity to open it up for visitation. Now, generally, this has been the case in the past with respect to early works. And that of the uh, wildlife department, like uh, they had tradition way back from 1900s where visitors were yeah. up. But the forest department yeah. did not have that type of thing. So, this okay. became so that is how it became, uh, uh, I would say, a heritage. If you go to the next right. slide, I think that just uh, sum, sums the things, summarizes it at all. Right? So, for conservation go. was established for data collection. So, let me, thinking of time frame, summarize and say, you know, this Singaraja is important in two ways for a visitor. One is, of course, he's going to see the beauty of a rainforest in Sri Lanka at the mid elevations and a little bit of the high when he climbs up to Mula Valla or if he has the time to walk all the way up to Singagala then he will have right. a much better right. understanding of the nature of forest right at the top, right? Uh, the second important thing uh, I think a visitor will appreciate when he comes to Singaraja is not just the aura of the forest and the fauna and flora and all of that, which I think Vimukti will explain uh, more detail, yeah. but the yeah. community involvement in this whole process. You see, 
that the idea the law in this country for conservation does not very much assist community participation sadly that is the reality but at the it ended that's why it was made into a different uh, uh, act through a different act so it doesn't fall into the forest act or the wildlife uh, act okay. but comes under okay. the wilderness heritage act which requires a management plan right. so all the right. villages something like 26 villages right round singaraj were somewhat given the opportunity to be part of the process and we even okay. train the younger generation okay. right round you know so when a visitor Fantastic. comes in he must understand that the forest is not just another forest but a very unique experiment for the future that's that's very 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 interesting and also that's that's really good getting the communities involved i know i mean when we visit singaraj as well everyone who takes us into the forest is is from that area and it's 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 lovely it's something lovely to see that you know sometimes you walk past his uh, his house your your try, your guy's yeah. house is is being passed when you go and easy would show so that's something really good where you have the people in the area taking a really good interest in it and and then they're preserving it for themselves for their futures as well so that's that's fantastic and and then all the visitors that visit as well can can get to experience um this from first hand from a person who lives right next to the forest and they're sharing all their knowledge with with the visitors which is which is fabulous i think um going back to i think now let we talk about the history the conservation the fee the features now it's time to talk that people like to actually if you really think about it let's go to mr vimukti for a little bit of flora i mean it's it's very free that you get in singaraja it's it, it's a rainforest you've got orchids you've got so much to talk about flora so let's take a few minutes mr vimukti and let's 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 give the 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 listeners um a little bit of insight on 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 the flora of of singaraja yeah i want to add something to what professor kotakam highlighted in fact Sure thing. People, the villagers also were part of the campaign also to stop the logging. So that was very important. When everybody, all the the organizations that were part of the conservation campaign, brought the villagers also in a very active participation. So that was very very important in terms of of how you build up a campaign uh, to in, in this scale. So um, when you yeah. in go to flora, of course, I'm not a super. you know flora expert I'm a wildlife person but at the same time uh, we learn about flora uh, because the flora is the foundation for everything the fauna is not going to exist without flora so that is something we all forget uh, and the, and the plants are absolutely uh, fascinating uh, when you dig deep into the into the flora floristic uh, you know uh, world i would say it's it's very fascinating and so you know the singaraja is said the singaraja flora of course the numbers are keep changing um, now of course there are about 211 plus uh, woody woody species have been identified and the 60 percent right. to 70 percent of these all flora is endemic to sri lanka that means if they disappear from sri lanka or from singaraja they will disappear from the face of the earth so that is why we need to emphasize that endemicity is is very high the another special thing about the the singaraja flora is they have a gonvanic uh, origin that means uh, when 150 million years ago when gondwana land separated and drifted 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 towards the loresh and hit the loresh yeah that journey a i would say and then, you know it did and play and then so many years and on a trip which we all and for us the origins of of the entire gondwana land separation so that is very okay. extremely important especially uh, in sri lanka uh, in singaraja the main dominant uh, plant genuses are, are uh, dona which is belongs to diprocarpus 
and uh, and mesua so the diploid carapus right. is extremely important in terms of for us to understand this biogeographical uh, journey right now we yeah. know the current dna analysis uh, showed us uh, there's a uh, genus called Sar uh, saras colensis in uh, solely in, in madagascar and now new dna technology has found that and the different has a, has a common ancestor uh, heritage, common ancestor. So that means we were 49 degrees south of what we are standing today and drifted so many years. And that is, is very important in terms of us to understand the biogeographical journey. So the plant is giving us so much of fascinating uh, stories about about this this journey. So the Singaraja is playing a key role in that because the Singaraja in Singaraja most of them are different carpus plants, different carpus species in, in, in Sri Lanka. Out of that 56, 58, 56 found only in the wet zone. Only two species are in the intermediate zone. So the Singaraja okay. is a treasure trove for that different carpus plants that has Gondwana land uh, connection so that we will be able to understand the whole uh, biogeographic, biogeographic uh, story and, and the journey uh, of Indian Indian play. So that's another part. Uh, when you go to the uh, next slide, uh, Aslan, and I will show you um, that we were talking about the, uh, the what do you call it, the canopy and everything and this is the the picture interior hydrology and uh, the when you looking at the plants uh, so much of complexity i i uh, as i explained earlier uh, there are different layers of the forest and the complexity right. is extremely high than any other forest in, in, in sri lanka so about within right. one hectare there are about two hundred and forty thousand plants it's including saplings uh, climbers, big trees and small trees and many things. It's so thick Message and number. so many niches. So 240,000 plants within one hectare. So that is how complex it is. You know, as you can see, it's a rainforest. Rain is part of that. This is the interior of the forest. Yep. Very complex. And this very complexity, 240,000 plants also providing a lot of niches, a lot of areas for many other biodiversity other uh, species to thrive in, in this forest so that is what the uh, what the plants uh, when you go to the uh, next slide uh, uh, so this is the eastern part of singaraja as i explained earlier now the the i told you now the lower side the western portion of sing is in the lower elevation and that forest is dominated by the Prakapas and mesua now uh, family uh, clusters, but when you go to the sub right. side, the eastern part of Singaraj, it's all mostly Cicigium species. So that is very unique. So in, when you go to the eastern side of Singaraj, uh, the the different type of species are very less, uh, whereas the Cicigium species are very dominant, uh, which is called Jambu family right. in Sri Lanka terms. So that area is almost like the the the, the whole type of habitat. Uh, uh, very wet and uh, windy and uh, trees are very stunted uh, umbrella canopies okay. all these features are sort of sub uh, forest features that is why singaraj is very important in terms of when you go from one end to the other uh, totally different uh, uh, climatic uh, zones are, are uh, go to the next slide uh, please and of course the mushrooms and fungi are there. They are the one who is breaking down all the dead uh, plants, dead trees, and things like that, and releasing those energy back to the, uh, to the forest. So these are natural cycles that are occurring in the rainforest, very, very common, not only in the forest, but also the other forest also. Rainforest, these are very, uh, because of the wetness, uh, these are everywhere you go and that is why i said when you go to the sea first um, so many things to see those big things these are not these are not elements they are not anything 
but it is all all about small things about all uh, go to the next one please so this is the nipricarpus zelenica tree as uh, you can see some fruits also they have a, like a helicopter two wings that is how they get their name um, this is the sort of dominant uh, dominant uh, family in, in singara the dipreka now people thought that this this uh, sort of a uh, seed has a two wings and they come down like a helicopter that is for the seed dispersal but i think uh, right. it is because that these trees are extremely tall sometimes the 200 200 feet tall and i think to to avoid the damage uh, of the of the seed that are falling from that height Uh, these sort of uh, wings have been have been developed. Because when you go to Singara the forest, uh, you would see uh, the Dipricarpus clusters, Tinian clusters, different Dipricarpus tree clusters. The seeds are falling uh, in the in the close vicinity of the of the mother tree. Uh, then it's it's going right. further further away. So it's very interesting to see uh, all these adaptations, all these. Um, sort of a uh, it's, it's, evolutionary uh, changes that are happening in the forest uh, go to the next slide please um this is another uh, uh, dipricarpus uh, tree it's called berelia during the uh, flushing season of course it's red uh, but the berelia has a special story because berelia uh, fruit uh, they have a mass fruiting uh, season berelia fruit is is collected by the villages around singaraj and they usually make it uh, they they make a lot of food items from berelia they grind it and oh, make it like a, a flour you know and then um, okay. this 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 tradition has been going on for many uh, generation so these kind of uh, connection the commercial value not the commercial the, the traditional use of plants and the non timber forest product these are called non timber forest products are part and parcel of the villages that are living around around singara uh, go to the next one please uh, this is a hal tree again another plant that has connection to the communities hal hal uh, uh, fruit tree is a right. bigger fruit they sort of scrape it and make it like a like a, 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 a sort of a grind it like this and then um, it's very it's extremely bitter but then they put it in in a sort of a flowing Uh, stream uh, to get rid of that right. uh, bitterness and then make bitterness. all kinds of of uh, food items from this hull uh, right. even today this is tradition as a nine mr vipi i'm i'm sorry but i have to interrupt you there for a second uh, mr vipi in yeah. in the interest of time because we've not got a lot of time on our hands i think yeah. something that we need to move on to is is is, is the bird everyone that is something that everyone attach a singaraja to the birds of singaraja and i think yeah. we have, don't have anyone better to speak about it than than professor kotagama professor kotagama so professor kotagama shall we shall we move on to the birds uh, could i uh, thank you thank you can yeah. i first invite vinitu to show the pictures of the birds that might uh, be sure a little thing. more interesting to see the class yeah. first and then we will look yeah. at the aslan. function later yeah aslan so, for sure aslan goes, can goes, uh, 24 yeah we've got aslan Just from nadia who's behind the scene <laughs> trying to connect so this oh, is yeah. calamus oh okay. so these are root uh, what you call uh, oh, okay. we go directly to the uh, so that's a very interesting animal actually which uh, which is one of the endemic actually prof prof we have yeah, almost we'll uh, 50 the... yeah, if yeah, you go we'll to the birds to the... first yes we we'll get back to the invertebrates and we get back to the the lovely butterflies but i think in the interest of time i think birds should just fly up to the top a little bit and then <laughs> we see the oh, there we go we start there off. you are We start, we start, start off with the main, the, the main, uh, crested, main yeah, character. crested drongo. This is a, uh, this is the one that wakes us up all in the forest early morning. No, and the prophecy wakes everyone. When it everyone, comes in, even the other the birds. Principal, yeah, it it is one of the 
nuclear members of what I will explain to you uh, as to what we call the bird feeding flocks that was recognized in Singaraja during the research time. Uh, never before been uh, recognized anywhere in the bed zone in this country. Uh, today it is such a phenomena across the world also. There are many such uh, bird flocks theories that, uh, but we in Sri Lanka has contributed quite a lot of uh, uh, details about bird flocks and how they manage to feed and all that. So the first question of course is the obvious question, why need, why do you need to flock in a rainforest? And it, I'm sorry, you know, I would have loved to play the sounds, not the music, <laughs> the sounds of the flock to you to make you understand. The difference. Let's let's keep that. But, uh, uh, let's keep that. A, let's keep that a mystery for our for our visitors right. who are watching. Okay. So that no, no, that's when what they I'm go to, to say. Raja, they can experience yes. it. The silence of the forest is something that you need to experience. Uh, such as silence of the forest, or the I would I often call my students listen to the forest and listen to the silence of the forest. Now you might wonder how can you hear anything in the silence, but that is what my, that is the experience that you have to have when you go into a rainforest. And then in the midst yes. of this, you can very vaguely hear somewhere in the distance a little bit of a cacophony, mainly by these birds. And then it builds up, and of course, you will all forget about the silence of the forest. It is just huge <laughs> cacophony. Last for about maybe. Five ten minutes and then again it fades away. That means right. you have encountered a flock of birds in the rainforest. You may see sometimes like 30, 40 species at a time, but generally we know we have over the years, 30 years of work, uh, there are about 22, 23 species always in these flocks. It's a very unique thing. That is not the case of any flocks anywhere in the world. And the second most important thing is that the core bird, which is this bird that you can see, which is the orange billed babbler, is the core bird of yep. these flocks. And they form sometimes, uh, in terms of numbers, sometimes uh, more than 50% of the numbers would be from these birds. Now, how many birds? I said around 22 species, that is different kinds of birds. How many birds in terms of numbers? I have experienced over 100 plus numbers of birds in a flock. Average, you will always meet about 30, 40 birds in a flock. So this is another interesting bird, an endemic to Sri Lanka, found only in the high forest. Now, why do I say high forest? These 30, these 12, uh, 22 different birds are not going to trample each other's toe and fight over food. They are very good partition in themselves, horizontally and vertically. I will show right. you some slides later with the results that we found, you know. So you don't trample toes. I am not going to eat from somebody else's plate and say, look, why did you eat my food? And so on, you know. These are, uh, this is another beauty of the rainforest, uh, the uh, Sri Lanka magpie. Uh, let, it is not a full member of the flock. We call this uh, person an associate. Taking okay. the opportunity to join a flock when the flock is going through their territory. These are territorial ah. birds. Uh, you will be surprised that the closest uh, neighboring member is the crow, totally black. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but this one is, you can see, is very beautiful. Right? And something else. He has a fantastic family. You know, he brings up his babies together like a corporate family. You know, we call it corporate yeah, breeding, right. corporate. Uh, not yeah. just the mother and father looking after the babies. But over three years, they train their younger generation how to build a nest, how to feed the chicks, because all their youngers are being assisted by their immediate children. So this corporate structure remains for three years, after which they move out and build their own nest and their own uh, chicks are brought out. So it's a very interesting, very, very, but they don't join, very, very they join the flock. Right, so you have another member of the flock, but not very common in Singaraja, uh, which is the uh, dark uh, brown-capped babbler, which is another endemic, 
right? So as we see in Singaraja, unique features is that uh, out of the 34 endemics that we have today, at least 28 you can see at Singaraja. Of course, they don't come to you and say, I am endemic. So you have to have the patience to watch <laughs> birds, walk through the forest, uh, and then you will uh, definitely. This was a brand new addition, uh, an addition, I would say, addition and addition to the flocks of, uh, to the birds of Singaraja and to Sri Lanka. Uh, Deepal Varakakoda and uh, Mr. Hoffman's name has been put into this, uh, which is Otus Pilo Hoffmani which is the Serendips Corps Owl. Uh, it was recognized in the forest and uh, of course uh, specimens were taken and named and today we have this new one. Uh, we have a huge attraction, you know. Uh, that's the uh, Drakkar or the Hill Miner. Yeah, that one, uh, after 1868, after 1868 we have not had a bird. 68, yeah. Yeah. So this is the Hill Miner, it's again an endemic. So I think we have a whole series of slides that will go and uh, tell you about the birds. Uh, this is ah, this is another interesting bird. If you look at its face, uh, we call it a frog mouth. You know, it has a very yeah. wide beak, wide. right? It looks like a frog. The thing, the male and female are of two different colors, but they sit together during daytime and rest. You can get very close to look at this. These are the birds that some people come just to see uh, because it's not very common. Uh, that is a trogon, very filthy bird when it is nesting, but a beautiful bird <laughs> in color. <laughs> yeah. So sadly, <laughs> this is a common bird which calls all the time, which is the yellow-fronted barbet. We can go to the next. I, I will just run through these birds. Right. Now I think Vimukti can take over the fish. Yes, right? Mr. Vimukti. Let's, let's hear about the fish, the freshwater fish in Singarada. I mean, that too is, is uh, something. I mean, there are people who are interested no, in so many, so many things. So. Yeah. The fishes, I don't think that the, the most of the visitors are interested, but nevertheless, we need to, when you talk about a place, of course, you need to talk about uh, every everybody. You need to do some, you know, fair share of all the, the species that are uh, inhabiting in this forest. Uh, as I said earlier, True. of course, it's a hydrologically rich and uh, very pristine, shady streams are flowing from the, from the, from Singarada. But for, sur for everybody's surprise, Singaraja streams are not full of high diversity of fish species. Uh, that is something uh, we don't know why, uh, but all, everything else, uh, all the other vertebrates, we have about total of 320 species of vertebrates are living in this uh, rainforest, but the fish diversity is not that high. Only few, few species are living in, in uh, these streams. So, Cheribab is one of these species, this is endemic to Sri Lanka. Uh, that has been exported uh, in large numbers in the past, but now I think it slowed down a little okay. bit. Uh, they love uh, the shady streams. Uh, Talcos, the, the comb tail, absolutely beautiful. One of the commonest in the in the streams of Singaraj. One of the commonest, and and it's uh, it's, it's magically beautiful uh, fish, endemic to Sri Lanka. But there's a special story about this comb tail. Uh, this comb tail is again found in the South East Asian um, island in the Borneo and, and Indonesian islands, but not anywhere else okay. in, in, the, in the world. So we don't know what is this uh, disjunct uh, distribution and I think that a lot of people are, uh, are sort of uh, studying on this, this particular phenomena, uh, which is very special. But uh, singer most invertebrates, we actually showed some uh, pictures earlier. Uh, the entire forest is, is ruled by the invertebrates, the, the bugs, the, the, uh, the what do you call the, the all the butterflies, um, uh, uh, freshwater crabs, so many invertebrates are decorating for it. So, when you are a visitor to, to Singaraja, as I said earlier, don't expect big ones, don't expect uh, big things, but the small ones are absolutely magical to, to watch. And this particular uh, amphibian species is uh, is from eastern part of Singarad. Uh, that is something very special in, in Singarad in terms of the amphibian life. About uh, 50 species are, are found in, in this in Singarad. But the eastern part of Singarad, they are what you call the the point endemics. That means they don't find anywhere else in Sri, Sri even in Singarad, 
anywhere else in Sri Lanka, but only the eastern part of Singaraja. The earlier uh, amphibian species, which is called poppy shrub frog, is found in that part of, of uh, Singaraja. This is golden shrub frog, uh, Auratus. Uh, this one is a very special one. Uh, uh, Auratus is, is in the low country area, a beautiful frog. And uh, these are all night operators, you know, in the daytime, very difficult to see them. This is a very common one, uh, popularized, uh, not popularized, this is, uh, I forgot its name. Uh, but it, this is a somewhat common one, but very, uh, very colorful uh, frog. So, um, this is again another uh, sort of a reptile uh, the, found only in the eastern part of Singaraja. This is early learning uh, horn lizard. The, of course, even though it says horn lizard, the horn is not visible. Very small horn is there, if you see uh, carefully. Uh, this is extremely restricted only to the eastern uh, zone of Singaraja, uh, where the conditions are totally different from the western uh, part of Singaraja. So these lizards are very special uh, just to Singaraja. If anybody wants to see this lizard, uh, they have to go to the eastern part of Singanaja, nowhere else, else on the planet. Uh, you know, when you go to the next slide, uh, so I mean, other other uh, things, of course, the endemic butterflies, uh, so many other things that are that are there in this this, this forest. Uh, this is hump nose uh, lizard, mm -hmm. which is all again uh, endemic one. And uh, very common in the in the wet zone, but this particular species, of course, found in the of uh, central highlands, also central part of uh, of the country, even in Kandy area, you will see them uh, during the right. mating display. It's absolutely magical colors, you know, the yellow, green. Sometimes the bright uh, blue is is visible uh, when they are aggression and when they are displaying it. It's it's magical to see. Not a very difficult uh, difficult. Uh, lizard to see in, in Singaraja, very uh, very colorful uh, lizard. So these are the the small things that you will experience in Singaraja. Uh, so mm -hmm. what you need yes. to keep your eyes open, uh, your ears uh, open, and so that you will see many things. Uh, that uh, the one the other interesting thing is all these small creatures that you will see in Singaraja, you wouldn't see anywhere else on the planet. So, if somebody wants to experience something special uh, that is uh, endemic to a place, uh, Sri Lanka, and to Singaraja, and that's the mindset that you have to have uh, to come and visit Sri Lanka. So, you have to go slow, you have to look at everything, you have to keep your mouth shut, keep your eyes open, then you will see many things. You know? uh, I would say sometimes, you know, I've been traveling to Singaraja for the last so many years. But even if you take the only the same trail, same footpath, over and over and over again, you will see so many different things every time you step into the forest. That's the beauty of rainforest. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's the same thing with the other forest as well. But yeah. the small ones are the ones that that ruling the signal. That's that's fascinating. It's fascinating to hear that there's so many things to see. I mean, from the small lizards to the frogs to uh, the butterflies, the moths, even even during the night. I mean, if you're staying over in Singaraja, just pick up a torch and head out in the night. Just walk around. You might see so many little little things. Um, so, in the interest of tourism, I'm going to go to Professor Kotagama. Professor, just yeah. briefly tell everyone what are the best times of year to visit. Um, you know, with looking at holidays and and things like that, and for different different reasons, whether you're just going to Look at the forest, or whether you're going to do bird watching. Just, just briefly tell our visitors um, and everyone who's listening uh, in the best times of years to travel. See the, and the, the, maybe, yeah, yeah that, that's a very, that's a very interesting question from the tourist perspective, because our tourist seasons are not uh, that links up with uh, some of the best times of Singaraja. You see, our season is when right. it is cold somewhere else, no? Uh, so, <laughs> but the thing is, you, Professor, where <laughs> We're, we're putting this out for everyone to learn so that they can come. Right. Even so if it's that's not the season, they have a They can change their time. <laughs> when you come from yes. the cold areas to the warm Sri Lanka, uh, the time is also rainy in, uh, in Singaraja. <laughs> so you have to be prepared to get wet and really experience a rainforest. 
because from about uh, September, November till about uh, January, early February, yeah. uh, it's pretty rainy within Singaraja, yeah. right? And right. being a rainforest, you can imagine the m amount of rain that you can have. But that, that yeah. is part of it. You know, if you're coming for the rainforest during the cold season of the north to enjoy the uh, tropics, then you have to face this. But the best time really is from about Ju July to about early September and February till about May. You know, uh, during those day days, it will still rain. One of the features you have to yeah. be ready all the time when yeah. you're in rainforest in Singaraja is in that rain. It will be bright right. at the gate, but by the time you get to what we say the research station, which is just two kilometers, it can rain and rain. So you have to be always ready to face the rain anytime. In the last couple of years, of course, uh, there has been subtle differences in terms of the amount of rain that falls, which may be right. due to climate change or not otherwise, but uh, this is the normal. Of all the months, to me, after being inside there, the best month is February. February Fantastic. is the best month because Fantastic. you have a lot of time at your hands and a lot of uh, right. sun, good, beautiful sun, right. uh, to see what you want and uh, minimum. Uh, there is, of course, something which we have to say, uh, whatever everybody talks about, uh, this is a rainforest. And there is <laughs> these light, tiny right. little fellows <laughs> uh, who can become a bit of a mess. And if you are averse to what I am saying, leeches, then you must come in February. Don't come during any other month or maybe even August is okay because August is a blow, uh, whole country dry season. So August is also yeah. okay. Uh, but you must be prepared because uh, they won't kill you. They, you have to just donate a little bit of blood because they wait for us. Right, so there's nothing wrong in doing that, uh, but of course, over <laughs> time we have recognized that you have to wear this uh, so called leech socks, leech uh, which socks. is now something that is uh, known across the tropics everywhere. Uh, yeah, in Sri Lanka, it's only yeah. the leeches that you have to worry at Singaraja, uh, of course, in other parts of the world, you have to worry about ticks and mites. So, we are lucky we yeah. don't have that issue in this country. Uh, when it is a little, when it is a little dry, you know, the leeches are not going to be in. Of course, if you venture out of the footpaths and things like that, uh, the chances are that they can get on to you. But uh, yeah. it's not a trouble yeah. because I think we are, we are talking to tourists. We have to make them a little uh, happy that they, they are not going to walk into a, a, a leech blob uh, with a yeah. leech pair of yeah. leech socks and a little bit of soap on it or uh, even something like citronella uh, just rubbed on the surface of it is good enough. It will just keep it away. Uh, one should not worry about it. Uh, it is when you worry. I recommend uh, to any visitor uh, that you should wear uh, boots or shoes that will cover your leg all the way up to your knees. Right. I don't do that, but that is right. my 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 way of walking in the forest. <laughs> I I wouldn't recommend to anybody. Uh, but those no. who come, they must uh, cover up themselves like that. Uh, if you are really sensitive, you might wear overalls all the way up to your head, uh, seal yourself <laughs> completely, uh, but then <laughs> then you won't enjoy Singara. No, you won't enjoy any rainforest. You won't enjoy that. You won't enjoy that. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, thank so you, you thank to... you, Professor, for bringing that up. That's something that I wanted to have a, uh, mentioned as well, the, 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 the leeches. I mean, that's something you can't avoid. But then, as you said, come in February, no. you, won't, you won't encounter them come that much. Come in February, August, and you have them. No, even during the right. other days, the leeches are going to be there. But uh, And the, yeah. there are other uh, little bit of things, you know, I if you come with a group, try to be in front. If you <laughs> yeah. fall back, you are going to be the victims of the leeches, right? Because the leeches also come to you because they know you are there, <laughs> right? So yeah. if you go in front, <laughs> you will realize that the leech density is much less. If you go at the back, <laughs> the leech density is high because by the time the two, three other persons have gone, the leeches know right. that there is somebody on the road. So they come okay. onto you much faster. So these are tips right. that you learn when you are in the forest after <laughs> some time. Thank you very much. Other Thank you very that, much, Professor. You know, I think, uh, Professor, I think we're very, we're running short on time. I think we had a little bit of a lag, so we started a bit late, but we can push on for maybe about five, five more minutes. I'll push it. 
I'm going to jump to Mr. Vimukti Rao. Mr. Vimukti, on a tourism side of it, on a photographer side of it, let's let's hear a few, very few, very briefly, do's and don'ts when you're in the forest, when you're photo, especially when you're photographing birds. Very quickly. Well, it's 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 very difficult, you know. It's very challenging. Of course, bird photography is anyway challenging. But when you go to the forest, uh, rainforest, even uh, it makes you really harder to capture a good uh, good pictures in in the rainforest. Uh, number one, patience. Number two, patience. Number three, patience. That's all I have to say. You have to wait and wait and wait because it takes a lot of time to capture a good bird picture in the rainforest. Uh, you know because the using artificial light is is not permis I mean not permit not it is permitted in a way but it is somewhat disturbing to the to the uh, to the bird life so i would say that try to you know use the the natural light as much as you can and then capturing it it is it is very time consuming a uh, patience will will pay you off i mean it is not it is not that easy uh, for example, to capture a, a red face marqua, a good picture of red face marqua, it took, uh, you know, I mean, obviously lousy pictures were there at the very beginning, but it took about a good 10 years for me to capture a very decent, very nice red face marqua picture. It, that is the difficulty of, of shooting in rainforest, not only in Sri Lanka, everywhere in the world, because I have experienced uh, rainforest, uh, uh, taking rainforest pictures in, in other parts of the world. Uh, the other thing is yeah. that you have to be very careful about your gear. You are carrying very expensive toys. So when you are taking expensive toys, you have to be very careful as per the uh, explain. Uh, the rain, humidity the rain. Uh, is, is a the big humidity, thing. The rain. Yes. So because of that, you always have to carry something to protect your, your precious hardware and uh, protect it uh, from, the, from the rain. So most of the time, you wouldn't get anything. Sometimes even if you get a good one picture, uh, you'll, be, you'll be really lucky. I'm not trying to encourage yeah. anyone. You know, camera is a, is, a, is a notebook for everyone now. And it's a very passionate, it's a very, uh, I would say, like very, you know, very posh hobby now. Right? So, but at the same time, you need to respect to the forest. You need to uh, be aware about the forest. You know, just learning about the creatures that you are trying to photograph is extremely important. You know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, photographing uh, uh, blue magpie is a, is a nightmare. It's not that, it's, it's yeah. very difficult. Today it's not that difficult because of their behavior. You know, they are their COVID day family as, uh, uh, it's not COVID, COVID day, okay? <laughs> COVID day family. So they come to, come in flocks to the sort of normal feeding areas. So that if you know the areas, if you stay in that, area nearby and then you spend a little bit of time then you can you might be able to capture a, a good picture of, of uh, blue magpie uh, i would say that blue magpie you know taking a picture of many bird photographers that visit sri lanka you know they always ask you know this is because it's so attractive and you have to come to sri lanka to get it and even though they are yeah. living in, in a little bit of small population in highlands but lowland singaraji is the, is the best shot for that uh, that right. Thank you very much, Mr. Mukti, for that. Uh, if I would say, right, you would need a tripod when you're in Singarata. Would I be right if I would say that? Of course, that is a must. That is a must. Mr. Mukti, yeah. yep. Right. No okay. hand photography in Singarata. No <laughs> hand photography in Singarata. Yeah. So I think we've we've come almost to the end of end of a wonderful conversation between two people who have vast experience in in, in singaraja not only in singaraja but to do with the the wilderness in in the entire country and and two people who have i think professor kotagama has worked a lot in trying to help preserve uh, whatever remaining forest that we have and he's, he's he's been a strong person behind most of the conservation efforts mr vimukti as well with his um, time at efl and then um, iucn doing a lot of work uh, in sri lanka trying to help preserve these these places for everyone to come and visit and see and, and for all future generations. End off, I'll jump to Professor first. Professor, final words for people who want to come and visit Singarada. Just a few few words and a few words of encouragement well, uh, so that they yeah, do come. I, I would pick up what just said about patience. 
you know that is the most right. important thing when you visit a rainforest not just for only photography but just to right. the fact of seeing what you want to see you will see the trees you see the some uh, the plant the fauna you need a huge amount of patience you need to experience it to s- not just see it alone is a uh, visual the experience is uh, auditory the experience is uh, sense touch so sense. what we say is uh, if you are in the rainforest uh, you should be able to use all five senses of course don't try to taste everything that you see on the <laughs> <laughs> road side but uh, a little bit of uh, knowing what to know, to know that you can can or cannot taste exactly. something but you should try you should try it. right so and of course uh, silence is the most important way into the forest as i said it is the experience of the si- hearing the silence of the forest not just only the experience hearing the silence of the forest you must be in the forest for that so mm. big groups uh, is not very much recommended moderate right. groups yes even if you are going in big groups i think when you enter the forest and move around in the forest it's small groups because when you are in small yeah. groups uh, you have all the time to be patient and inquire uh, into the uh, forest character it will be different in the future because uh, in these covid days i'm sure the visitation it is zero and much of the to singaraja after don't expect the fancy pictures that you see on the books of many of the singaraja book right so <laughs> even the eyes uh, when you have been in and out of it it would have going to be for the rainforest in the future in 1972 74 to 77 and how it has regenerated back and i think the beauty i have to tell you things of it's like the amazon singer totally different uh, p- uh, what you call pigry forest it is a very open area because you are looking at one by lowland rainforest that you get in the amazon uh, is very very thick so don't think of thick. Uh, cut your way through into the forest you know many tourists come and say oh my god island rain forest we have mid highland open very open well now they do well now they do <laughs> yes and find this is because i'm a i'm a very much pay attention to the flora all fantastic stories the, the symbiotic the, the relationship between animal is there in the red forest sometimes the tiny animal those things i think your guide will on the on the fascinating finding the everything in, in the forest you know right. not only the animal and ask questions but don't break trap oak it and put in trying to put you can't give that conditions in your home garden so don't leave your footprint but don't take anything else yeah. um you can donate um but don't uh, well thank you very much gentlemen giving us your time and enlightening people on on singaraja and why visit and 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 on the history and that success story of of preserve whatever is remaining of 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 our very much gentlemen for both an idea of what they need to do and why they should it's a fantastic place i've been there um so please do do visit come take pictures um and we will always warmly welcome you And so once again thank you very much gentlemen I think that has come to the end of our session um there's another one on the 28th um on on coral reef we're signing off from sri lanka thank you very much. I mean it's, it's it's good evening here but good morning good night well i want to everyone thank you very much i want to all